Can you guys hear me better? I put in my um, my little like earbud connector thingies. I'm hoping this works a little bit better, but I don't know if it will. So we will see. I'll let people hop on. Can you guys hear me now? Can someone just comment? They can hear me if you guys can hear me. Um, if anyone could just let me know because... I have no idea if you guys can hear me. Okay, great. I'm glad that you can hear me. Okay, sorry about that. I have no idea what was up with that. But um, there seemed to be a lot of interest in um, me hopping on tonight, or some, I should say, not a lot, in me hopping on tonight and sharing with you guys what happened to me and how you can prevent it from happening to you. And so I wanted to do that. I wanted to come on and talk to you guys about what happened. My friends who have come to visit me or spoken to me on the phone, I've told them what happened because... I mean, I have no issue sharing my story, but I feel like I've sort of given you broken bits and pieces and updates on my progress, and um, I feel like I can't, I, or I haven't really pieced together the whole thing for you. So I just wanted to piece it together. I know there was a newspaper article, but um, I was there. Truthfully, I don't remember a lot about the accident, but I do have a lot of the details. So... Um, on August 10th at around 8 a.m., I took um, our new puppy, Sydney, out for a walk. It's a loop I walk all the time. Um, it's something I do before work just so I can get like in her walk, and sometimes it gets really hot throughout the day here, and so I do it early in the morning, or not early in the morning, but um, early enough that it doesn't get super hot, and um, I was... Um, about three quarters of a way, I was almost home um, when I got hit, and I was three quarters of the way through a crosswalk on, I'll call it a well-traveled road, it wasn't like a highway or anything, but I was in the crosswalk with my dog, and I was like over one half of it, like the one, cars going one way, and I was halfway through cars going the other way, and um, I got hit by a car at full speed. Um, what the driver told the police is that he was sign languaging the person in the seat next to him, the, the passenger, and he just wasn't paying any attention. So there's definitely way more forms of distracted driving than just texting. And, um, I will probably, you know, be making that a cause for me going forward because that's so true, right? We get distracted by so, so, so many things when we drive and that is so freaking scary. So, um, that's what happened. And, um, a, people said they saw me and the puppy fly up in the air and I landed on the ground, obviously. And I believe the person, they both stopped. It was not a hit and run. Um, the person behind the guy stayed with me until the ambulance got there, and they took me um, directly out to um, a hospital in Worcester. So um, that's where I went. I went to the trauma unit. The people on the scene, I guess, were very scared for my life because I was bleeding a lot from my brain, um, and yeah, but um, thankfully... Um, I went right into brain surgery when I got to the hospital. Now, I had my phone on me, but it's locked, and my husband is in there as his name. And um, I did not have my ID on me, guys, because I was walking the dog. I didn't even have my keys on me because, um, you know, I didn't feel like I needed them. And so I would definitely just recommend for, I know a lot of my friends have dogs, like so important to grab your ID when you take the dog out um, so that they can find your spouse or who you are. My like bracelet at the hospital said my name was Boca Boca and I was born in 1901. Now, we got really lucky because um, my dog's tag has my number on it, which I'm sure they called first, and then my phone rang, and they were like, that's not her. Like, this isn't who we need to speak to. She's the one on the side of the road. And my husband's phone number. So they called my husband, but they didn't know who I was. So they were like, do you have a dog walker? And he's like, nope. And they, he figured out that it was me, and he was able to get to the hospital. We literally just put 
uh, his number on those tags, like when we got the puppy, because before it was just my number, because we were together when I first got Fenway. So if you are a single person and you only have your number on the tag, please put someone else's number on the tag, your in case of emergency person. If you are married, you know, put your husband's number on the tag. Um, it's just so important because I guess he would have come home and I would have been here and then he would have had to find me like craziness, right? So I'm obviously really thankful that I had that number on the tag and I just want to caution people to make sure that they have a second number on their dog's tag and that their dog has a tag at all times. Like, I, I yeah. Um, and for those of you asking about Sydney, so my puppy, um, she was only with us like five weeks when the accident happened, which is so crazy. She's fine. Like, there was also someone who stayed with her um, until they took her to the vet, but she had like a scratch on her. And the vet was concerned because she didn't pee and poop like right away, but we had just been on a walk. So she probably went on the walk. And um, a friend of mine came and got her and she peed and pooped at her house. So the dog is totally fine. She's so lucky she bounced. Thank God my older dog, whose name is Fenway, was not with us. Sometimes he doesn't come for a walk because he's old and crotchety. <laughs> because that's who he is, and we have a fenced-in yard, so he can, you know, do his business out there if he doesn't feel like getting the exercise, because um, I don't believe he would have bounced as well, because he's old, he's almost nine, but she bounced, and she had a harness on, which is also really great um, in this case, um, because she didn't get her neck pulled or anything, so, so that's my first, like, word of caution, is to carry an ID, um, always and make sure that you have a second number on your dog's tag and a first number on your dog's tag. So um, they took me directly to the hospital. Um, my husband got there very quickly. He got there right before I went into brain surgery. Um, some of you may know that my parents were out of town. They live close to us normally um, and they were out of town and for my brother's wedding, um, he had a couple of um, weddings out where he lives, and they were at his his first wedding, and they we were we were actually headed out that weekend for his second wedding, and um, we couldn't go, and my parents ended up flying back and not being able to attend. So, thankfully, he is having another wedding, so um, out here, so we will be able to attend in October. Um, that wedding. So, um, anyway, so that's sort of, you know, what happened and it was really scary and I had brain surgery. Um, I had a hematoma in a very bad place and they had to rush me into emergency brain surgery, um, which is why I'm walking and rocking this cool shaved look. And um, I don't have any permanent brain damage. Thank God. I'm mentally okay. I'm so thankful for that. Um, and then I stayed Thursday and then they decided to do the hip surgery Friday, which I have this external fixator on my pelvis for, and hopefully that is coming out relatively soon. But, um, I guess I just wanted to like, you know, obviously tell people to be very, very careful crossing the street. Don't think that cars are going to stop for you. I don't think I saw this guy. Obviously, he didn't see me. It was broad daylight in a crosswalk. Um, and, you know, it can happen to anyone. You know, it's so crazy how quickly this can happen. Like I said, I don't remember much. But I wanted people to know that you know, as careful as you are, which I feel like I'm pretty careful. I think walking in a crosswalk in broad daylight is pretty careful. Crap can happen. It's important that people know who you are and who they can contact. There's also like a way to put an emergency person in your phone and every single phone is different, but that the, the EMTs don't actually have to unlock it to get to the, your emergency contact. So you may want to also do that. Um, put that emergency contact information in, figure out how that works, and they can actually access that without having to um, unlock your phone, which a lot of people's phone, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of personal information in your phone. You may um, um, want to do that. What did Cindy say, Addis? 
Oh, okay. Cindy said to put an out-of-state phone number, like someone who doesn't live in state. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you could totally do that. Um, but in this case, I needed someone in state because I needed someone to come to me at the hospital. So uh, I'm thankful my husband was on there, but I guess you could put a third number of someone who doesn't live anywhere near you in case there is some sort of natural disaster or something. That's a good point. But yeah, all this stuff comes in handy, especially for pets, for natural disasters, for sure. And I will not be walking without my ID anymore. I will um, be very careful about that. But for those of you that might or could get in a situation, you want to make sure your pet's number's on there. So that's kind of like the gist, I guess, of, of what happened. I think a lot of people, you know, knew I got hit by a car, obviously, but didn't know how or when or why. And I wanted to fill you all in on the bits and pieces of, of, of what happened. Um, cause I feel like I gave you all like half stories, which I feel bad about, but that was kind of like me being spastic and wanting to update you on my situation and, and how I was doing and all that sort of stuff. So, um, I hope you all have an awesome rest of your football Sunday. I think that's what it is. If you have any questions, please like ask them below. I'm happy to answer them. I just wanted to throw that out there because this can happen guys. Like it doesn't just happen to people. Brand, you know, all my friends are like, Oh, I can't believe this happened. Like I can't either to be honest. And, but it happens and I want everyone to be protected and be able to protect their pets and their family. And, you know, um, thankfully, you know, we had close friends that could pick up you know, the puppy from the vet. And then we, my husband actually didn't know that Fenway wasn't with me. And so we sent people out like looking for him because he thought maybe he was like roaming the neighborhood or something. Um, but he was here and they were able to get into the house and, and get him out. Thank God. And, um, we have had amazing friends and family who have been able to help us with the dogs. They are back home now, but, um, we had so many people that kind of stepped up to the plate and, and helped us out, which has been unbelievable. So we're so, so, so thankful for that. So um, I will let you all go. I hope this was helpful, and I hope that you guys make the decision to put the right numbers on your dog's tags, to carry your ID, to have that emergency information in your phone in case something like this happens to you. Um, because like my husband and I were talking about it, if his number wasn't on there, I mean, he would have come home and not found me and had to like call the police and I don't think it would have been good. Like, I think that's way, way, way worse. It wasn't great the way that he found out. Um, and obviously they did not, when he talked to the police, they did not know how I was doing. So, or if I was alive, which is super scary but at least he was able to find out right away and get there like before I went into surgery and um, be with me through all that, which I think was better for him and he'll probably tell you um, it was better for him. And yes, I mean, as drivers, like you guys, like no text is worth a life. Um, and even like there's other ways you can be distracted, you know, by your kids, you can be distracted. Um, you know, lips, putting on lipstick or reaching for something. There's so many different ways you guys can be distracted. So just be so careful when you're driving to not do that. And, and I will admit that I was definitely a culprit of distracted driving before this, and I will not be anymore. AT&T has this cool thing where you can put an alert on when you're going over 15 miles per hour and your phone feels it. You, it sends out like if someone calls or texts you, it sends out like this thing that says like, um, you know, I'm driving right now. I can't answer my phone. No text is worth a life. And it's like this automatic text that goes out. So you don't even get the call or text until you go less than 15 miles an hour, which is pretty cool. So you can definitely set that up if, you know, you want to and you feel like you might be tempted, which is always, which is always great if you feel like you might be tempted. All right, well, ask any questions you have below. Feel free. I hope this was helpful. I hope it helps someone be proactive and have an awesome rest of your evening. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.